Oh, hello, 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 hello. How is it going? I am your host of the Extremely Mid Range Show. You have to say it like that or else the joke doesn't work. Uh, thank you so much for coming in and checking in right now. Uh, we'll we'll hold for a little bit, let some people start coming in. But thank you for tuning in and watching. Uh, the title of this episode, ooh, the title of this episode is called It's Early But. Now, the reason why I'm calling it that, because like, let's be honest, only two weeks have happened in the NBA. Only that two weeks of basketball have been played. I don't want to overanalyze anything. But at the same time, there are some hints to future problems, maybe team showing out, and also drama oh my gosh we had drama last week we're doing drama again all right so speaking of which let's act like lena dunham in the first season of the hit hbo show girls and head over to brooklyn for some drama oh my goodness after only seven games into the 2022 2023 nba season the Brooklyn Nets part ways with coach Steve Scapegoat. I mean, Steve Nash. Oh, my gosh. Uh, like, I was going to talk about this in a, like, larger segment about teams that we expected to do well that are kind of underperforming right now. But uh, Brooklyn was just like, no, we want every single ESPN show podcast to talk about us. Like a gift to the Lakers. Uh, what a gift to the Lakers. Because now we're not talking about that one and, you know, five start. But oof. But with recent headlines like this, you know, the Kyrie situation, uh, we'll get into that uh, later on in the show. We, we, we have to talk about them. So I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. I, if you were to ask me, hey, Alan, were you praying for the Brooklyn Nets downfall? I'd be lying to you if I said no. I, I, I was. I was. I'm not going to lie. But. Not like this. Not like this. This doesn't. This is not even enjoyable. This is just like a, a train wreck mixed with a, a boat crash and like the last hour of the Titanic. Like it's just so like ugh, I'm just not feeling it. So, ugh. but here's the thing. Fun fact: in the ten years of the Brooklyn Nets have been uh, a thing since they moved from New Jersey. Steve Nash is the most winningest coach under that <laughs> franchise, which is wild. He's he's sitting at a record of what ninety four and sixty seven. Uh, with a playoff record of seven and nine. So I feel like he's being judged for his playoff record because let's be honest, when we saw this team getting constructed years ago, we thought by now they'd at least have a chip, something, or even a finals uh, a finals appearance. There's just nothing to kind of look at. So everyone's kind of blaming Steve Nash, even though there's a lot of different issues that we could talk about. You could talk about Ben Simmons being integrated into the system after missing a whole season. Uh, the whole KD, Kyrie Irving uh, drama in the summer, uh, um, Kevin Durant wanting a whole trade from the team. But no, they've chosen to use Steve Nash as the uh, the scapegoat. And I felt like after Kevin Durant was talking about leaving and asking for a trade and wanting his coach to be fired, Steve Nash was playing on borrowed time, right? It felt like that. And uh, according to uh, Alan Hahn, great name, uh, of ESPN Radio, Sean Marks revealed that Nash told him that the team is not responding to him. Now, if something that embarrassing happens to me and I tell you that in confidence, don't go tell people. Don't go. Like, that's the, that's the worst leak. Like, it's not even, like, through the grapevine, you know, a staffer or somebody in the back heard it and they whispered it to an ESPN. Literally, Sean Marks said this. Don't Don't say that. Keep that to yourself, all right? And once the team is not listening to you, it's 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 pretty much over, you know? Because once you lose the confidence of the players, <clears throat> David Blatt, uh, it's over. Like, these are not children. You don't have an automatic uh, a sense of superiority or authority over them. You have to kind of look at them as a job. And if they don't respect you, they ain't going to respect you. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll tell a quick story. Uh, I used to coach. I used to coach a, 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 a basketball team. And uh, uh, the <laughs> they sucked. I'll be honest. I was, I'm gonna be blunt with it. They weren't a good team. They were a really bad team. Uh, they, they, you know, a couple good players, but it wasn't even like I can work with bad. Bad is fine. They just did not believe in themselves, <laughs> which would suck because I'm like, yo, just two three zone, hide the holes, and we'll, we'll win games. And it, it 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 was so frustrating and so apparent how frustrating their children didn't 
uh, you know, try or I put any effort in, the parents were just like looking at me like sorrily after every game. They're like, hey, coach, you good? And give me like a free coffee and a donut. I'm like, thanks, guys. Uh, this is great. Good thing I took a day off work for this. But uh, I hope those kids are in the league. I don't know where they are. But uh, <laughs> so now so back to the story of, um, you know, Brooklyn Nets and the drama there. So Jacques Vaughn is now taking his interim coach who, you know, originally thought should have been the coach for that team. So he found his way, but now he's an interim. So there, that's good. And now more drama on top of this, we have to talk about the rumors that the Brooklyn Nets are looking at Aime Udoka, the former coach for the Boston Celtics who got uh let go for a one-year suspension because of uh, workplace misconduct. Uh, they're trying to bring him in. Now, if you try to bring an Aime Adoka after all that, like after his, I don't know, his vacation, because it's not really a punishment if he's back in the league. Uh, he's in the league before American Thanksgiving, which is wild. Uh, now, it, it, you know, if you're bringing in him right now, and if these are rumors are to be, you know, to be founded or be true, that means either A, they didn't vet him, and they're just bringing him in without an investigation, or B, you've investigated the claims, and now you're you've just been waiting to fire Nat. Both options suck. Both options kind of stink of just a poor mismanagement of organization. And you can keep blaming the players, you can keep blaming you know the coaches, but the real problem, the real stank of that whole organization is from the top, and it's been that way since the beginning, since the Pro Karab era, Jay Z. It's just not run well. It's not a good organization. All right. Um, the, this, I don't know. I feel like if you're going to fire Nash, this should have been done in the summer, right? Like it, it feels like this is a, an opportunity to do this a long time ago and not kind of bring him out here. If it, it kind of feels, you know, it feels like, <laughs> remember, remember the days of, uh, Dwayne Casey from the Raptors and Dwayne Casey was out here. Uh, he won coach of the year and then immediately the next year just gets canned. You know, it kind of feels like that. Whoops, I'm trying to pull something up here. It's going to be really funny later if I do it. But um, <laughs> it, it stinks of that. And I, I feel sorry for Nash in a lot of ways. I feel like Nash just should just take some time off. You know, go go out to BC. Go make pottery with, you know, Seth Rogen, some clay pots, and just collect yourself because you got you got the short end of the stick on this one. Um, now, back to Ami Udoka. Uh, for, if you're talking about bringing him in after all that he went through over in Boston is kind of wild basing on Joe, Joey size, the, uh, I guess the executive vice president of the team, uh, his words. Cause he was talking about Kyrie Irving where there's like, it's bigger than basketball. It's bigger than basketball. And then you go around, you say that about Kyrie Irving. And then on the other hand, you do this and you bring in Ayami Udoka. So what is it? What does that mean? What do your words mean at this point in time? If you're just kind of just saying things to chastise, you need to say things to actually mean what you say. So kind of a, a, a down kind of, I don't know. Oops, I was supposed to show that later. But you know what? That makes sense there. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just the accountability is out, out the door, you know? And now, now to Kyrie. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Kyrie Irving, it, it, like... After posting that, if you don't know what the whole story, I'll give you a quick little recap. He posted some like weird kind of hotepi black Israelite video that has some disparaging comments and anti-Semitism just like reek through it. And he posted it and then he talks and then he's not really defending what he was saying. He was not even like pulling back and apologizing. He got really contentious with, uh, with some of the interviews. He even like uh, contradicted himself within like a minute. Uh, and he's not even apologizing. And then he had the gall to go out and play and then put up four points. It's like, if you want us to not think about this, dude, you're not doing, you're not doing the Kobe thing where you're dropping 80 points and all of a sudden no one's noticing. You, you just kind of really dropped the ball on this whole thing. I, 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 it's kind of wild that he's still playing without any type of punishment, fine from the league, from the team, nothing, not even apology. Like, let's be honest. Like it, it happened to, if it happened to a lesser player, which it did, um, I forgot his name. Myers Leonard. Myers Leonard of the Miami Heat. These guys a little gamer boy, angry dude. Said some uh, racial epithet for you know, and an, an rooted in anti-Semitism. And he had to write this whole apology. And he's been out the league. And like, Kyrie Irving needs some form of accountability. Some type of apology needs to be made. Some type of men's. Either you find him or whatever. Like something needs to happen. He can't just go out there and just keep playing and thinking that you know, it's just sweet still. You know, and uh, 
I feel like the Brooklyn Nets, if when hiring Ime Odoka, are kind of like Air, you know Air Canada. They don't care about or give a fuck about your baggage, you know. But with that all being said, I just want to quote the a wise proverb from the scholar Masai Ujari. Oh, wait. there we go. Definitely going to edit that later on to make it make more sense, but whatever. Now we're moving on to the next segment. Let's call it. Let's check Twitter. If I had music, that would be so cool right now. Let's check Twitter. So uh, let's check Twitter. I'm just going around. I have some really interesting things here that I've compiled that I want to talk to you about. Okay. So first things first. Wait, let me go here. Bookmarks. I feel like there was another one there. Yeah, so here's uh, Ahmed, uh, big business on Twitter. Shout out to him. Uh, he posted this really funny video of the Lakers having a, a party time. And here, that's Kendrick Nunn right now with his mask. But that's fine. NBA, NBA Halloween is a lot of fun. But this is this is the one I really wanted to show you. This is the coach, Darvin Ham. Yes, the Darvin Ham, Dunker, Milwaukee great, right here, cutting a rug. Hey, no coach, no coach. Hey, you did that. I'm singing and I ain't gonna lie, yo. He, he he dances like an uncle at the party who's just like had a couple of beers, kind of chilling, you know. He's having a good time. Hey, shout out to Sebastian Breton. What's up? Ha. Yes, fuck Brooklyn indeed. Men's of the DJ, thank you for shouting in. If Rafi Cut coached the Nets, how many more games does she win than Steve Nash? I'll hang up and listen. Yo, if Rafi Cut coached the Nets, 82 and 0. 82 and 0, 16 and 0 in the playoffs. Easy. She's about precision, setting goals. And then affecting them and then just just accomplishing them. She could do that one time, one time. Shout out Rafi God. If you don't know who Rafi God is, go watch Great Canadian Baker Show season four. Oops, that was a spoiler. Never mind. Watch the spin-off series, ba better baking with Rafi God. Uh, so next thing we want to show here, shout out to Marlon Palmer out here, that dude McFly on Twitter. And he wrote uh this is a video of <laughs> of scotty bonds out here with a really great story lol can't tell me this man's not from ends okay we gotta we gotta hear this story yes, what? Ooh. i just went to the mall before the event i bought it it was like four hundred dollars <laughs> guess what though bro i went back to the mall today that same shirt is back in the store bro <laughs> I returned it, guys. <laughs> City boys. Come on, man. They thought they was going to get me with the $400 shirt, bro. No, fam. <laughs> it's back at the store, bro. Yo, I, I love that. I love how we've just fully embraced that man into this city. He has done good things for us. I'm super excited for him. It's, it's super weird to look up to somebody 10 years younger than you. You know, like now I'm at that age where I'm like the coach's ages or maybe like an assist. Not even not coach's age. That's probably a little too much, man. But I'm, I'm getting up there and it's, you know, watching these young guys come to the league who are like have a really good song in their heart and a really good kind of mentality. Is, it's it's fantastic. And I I, I love it. Also, the, the amount of times he said, bro, he, he he's from ends. Also, oh, NBA Halloween. We're back at it. Reggie Jackson with a with a power line with the power line. Come on now. Come on now. That's the toughest Halloween costume right there. That's the coldest one. Powerline, a.k.a. Tevin Campbell from the hit movie. And I mean hit movie. A goofy movie. Come on. That is the most underrated Disney film. All right? And I'm not just saying that because I was the perfect age when it came out. It's got the best songs. All right? We got uh, Tevin Campbell singing it. We got Aaron Lore singing it. We got Goofy. That's my terrible Goofy impression. It's just an overall banger of a movie. And also, when you're watching as an adult, mm, it hits differently. You're just like, Goofy just wanted to spend time with his kid, man. What, Max, why you gotta be like that, man? Because as a kid, I was like, stop embarrassing Max. Leave him alone. Now I'm like, yo, just let your dad love you, bro. <laughs> let him love you. 
All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> this is funny. I like this one. Uh, shout out to Philip Barnett, regular Barnett on Twitter. Uh, I got a theory that teams that are losing to the Jazz on purpose because no one in the league wants to see Victor Wembanyama in Utah. Because here's a picture of, oof, just the, the Jazz. The Jazz are on a hot streak. The Jazz are on a hot streak. I like this because, like, these teams that are winning, like, we we, we all thought the Jazz, the Blazers, the Spurs were going to be just losing and just throwing in the towel, trying to tank and get that. But they're winning. They're winning. Are they a bunch of are the Jazz and Spurs a bunch of T-80 tanks? Because, oh, whoops, messed that joke up. Are the Jazz and Spurs a bunch of T-80s? Because they are looking like some bad tanks. Yeah. That joke was from Twitter that I wrote. It got one like and one comment. And you know what? It was worth it because I've repurposed it for this. <laughs> but also... Back to the Jazz. The Jazz are on. I think they're about six and two right now. And Lowry Markinen is going off. Okay, he is going. I got to give him a shout out. And it's interesting to see, you know, this team do that well because this team wasn't constructed with those guys in mind. It's a bunch of just like utility players. Um, uh, what's his name? Long Arms. Tht from uh T Taylor Horton Tucker, uh Kelly uh, Kelly Olynyk, uh Josh Hart. Um, not Josh Hart, sorry. Um, Jordan Clarkson. This wasn't. This is a bunch of like pieces that came from a fire cell when they traded away Donovan Mitchell and um, and Rudy Gobert. So to see this team play this way, like, is it sustain sustainable? I don't know. I don't really think so. But who knows? It's pretty remarkable, and you know, it's it's pretty cool because they have a good like pick and roll. Where if everyone's switching on everything, okay, well then fine. Now Lowry Marketing and Kelly Olynyk, you know, they're not the you know, the biggest bangers down low, but at least they got some some easy touches. They got a mouse in the house kind of scenario going on there. So shout out to them. Uh, I hope I hope it works. I hope it works, but not really because I don't like jazz fans because they racist. Uh, here's the next video. Uh, this is from NBA Central. You can talk. I just want to do a full screen right here. Taco Fall yeah. is Yo, China. Yo, Look at like a creative player. Look like a my player, seven foot seven. He's just giving work out there. Look at this man. No, absolutely not. This guy is getting steals, stripping people, going full length of the court, and dunking, hanging on the rim. Look at this. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I I just I just root for him. I root for him. I root for anyone that size playing basketball. I want the league to eventually become a whole bunch of seven foot seven people out there, and you know, and one eight footer who's just way too big, just towering over that person. I I want to see that going on in the league. <laughs> Whoops. And now the next one back to NBA Halloween. John Wall killed this. John Wall killed this. Oh my goodness. If you don't know, this is from the movie Blue Streak. Uh, once again, another uh, underrated classic. If you want to watch, this, this is this is Martin Lawrence and Dave Chappelle uh, in their respective bags. All right, and this is a, a great costume, man. That's funny. Um, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Also, that scene specifically, just go on YouTube. Not now. Later. Go, go actually you know what now pause this video it's not a video it's live uh but go watch that movie really good really funny uh mia fagan uh agrivado mia agrivado on uh, hopefully i'm saying your name right on twitter also posted this video we got to check this one out this is halloween first off i don't like let's want to say this before we start this video i don't like uh haunted houses i don't fear is a negative emotion why am i paying taxable income to go get scared. Why would I want that? Why would I want murmurs? Why would I want my heart to skip? I'm not paying for that. All right. I, if you put me in one of those places and somebody jumps out at me, I'm not going to flight or fight. I'm going to do both. I'm going to do F and F. I'm going to run, punch and scream. And my nose is going to run. Don't bring me to them. All right. Especially the ones where they touch you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I last one good.
like that last one. Kyrie and the consequences of his actions. Yes, indeed. Also, that little boy who just kind of score up like that. Uh, now back to the war or the North Obama. Oh, that state. This is after the Brooklyn Nets lost. Ooh, the Bucks. Steve Nash cheesed off. Just throwing stuff away. Whoops. Back to this. Let's check Twitter. Also, now nah, this funny tweet here. Nah, nah, damn, we suck. Did the Warriors win? They just kind of keep posting. The Warriors right now, oof, they're playing real bad. Uh, this is a video after the Lakers' first win. They're acting like they won the championship. Listen, if we're doing this for a one win game like that, like we can't, we like people who clowned the Minnesota Timberwolves for living or being excited for winning a play in game, you got to clown them for this stuff. Cause there's a video that comes with it that's just like super embarrassing. Oh, does my internet just not want to work? Like, wow. All right. Whew. Also here, shout out to Dom 2K. The Spurs and Jazz being better teams than the Lakers and Nets is exactly what would happen in 2K simulation. Hilarious. Here is Kyrie Irving uh, speaking to reporters. This is the last, last, time he ever, or last time he spoke to the press. But here's him contradicting himself within about a minute. Position to have a level. I'm in a unique position to have a level of influence on my community. You guys come in here and make up this powerful influence I have. I'm in a unique position to have a level of influence on my community. You guys come in here and make up this powerful influence I have. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that, uh, the Chappelle show sketch where it's like, I didn't step on this couch. I got more sense than that. Yeah, I did step on this couch. It's just like that same kind of rhetoric. Uh, and last video here, this is from Ahmed we again. Throw words around here. Uh, just cringe right like now. The letter I to be in the word this is a us a we team and that together this part that's why we take out an eye and if we take ourselves out me included coach included everybody in this room and we make this a we and an us room then the eye turns into that thing right there and that's what everybody's chasing okay rob Palenka, calm down calm down rob Palenka. that's not true you put a team together that doesn't make any sense listen if there was a a uh uh a playbook and how you use LeBron James, you surround him with three point shooters, not people who take up the key, not people who take up the key. But uh, yeah, that's it for let's check Twitter. -na 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 -na. That's the song that would play if I had one, but don't, I don't. All right, moving on. Next segment, uh, I just want to call it New League. Who this? Uh, it's just a little shout out that I really want to say. Some of the, some of the things I already kind of touched uh, earlier in uh, the Twitter segment there. But uh, it feels like the league is changing, right? Like, it feels like a singularity has happened. Like, all the young kids and teams have really taken over the mantle. Like, um, Giannis, Luca, I feel like it's their league now. And we're seeing that no one's afraid of the Big Bad Wolf. No one's afraid of the Lakers. No one's afraid of the Warriors. The Warriors just won a championship. And, you know, uh, uh, Devin Booker's out there giving work to – to Clay Thompson, you know, like it, 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 it just feels like everything is shifting. All the teams we thought were good, Nets, Warriors, uh, Warriors were three and five, oh, four in the road, uh, Clippers, one and five, like all these teams are under 500. So it feels like the torch is being passed to the next generation. And, you know, the Bucks are five and oh, Luca's, Luca Magic is fully unleashed. Even the Rooks are looking like grown, like Paolo ba ba Brancero or Brancaro, sorry, over out in, um, in Orlando. Oh my goodness. He looks like he's a like a, a five year vet or an eight year vet. He looks like he's in his prime already. Now, if you extrapolate that for a moment, like if you if you take that data set and extrapolate, sheesh, he's gonna be you know the next Michael Jordan. I don't know what that voice is, but <laughs> he's gonna be great. You know, he's, he feels like a complete package. And even like Bull Bowl's getting unleashed, which I'm excited for. And once again, I'm excited for the tall guys. Give it to, give it up to the tall guys. Uh, yeah, it just looks great. And also, I got to give a huge shout out to the, the the Indiana Pacers, man. The Indiana Pacers, in I think about three, four years, are going to be such a good team. They're going to be pretty good. And Ben Matherin, who's looking once again, like I feel like any other year, if Paolo wasn't there, Ben Matherin would have been the rookie of the year. If we're talking about like maybe even last year too, he could have been rookie of the year. And Duarte, that team's looking real nice. Now, I want to move on to the next segment which is an interview which that I did with Kofi Yaboa from SB Nation, right? 
now. With my guest, Kofi Yaboa. Thank you for coming here and hanging out with me and uh, talking some hoops. Of course, no problem. Yeah. yeah. Anytime. Uh, yeah. Uh, one thing, it's kind of uh, hard to nail down exactly what you do. I know you do uh, videos with Secret Base, you do Twitch stream. What would you consider yourself? So currently, I am the engagement manager of Secret Base. I run the Twitch, t Twitter, and uh, TikTok accounts uh, for them. I also co host a show called Fumble Dimension with uh, John Boyce, where we try to make the Twilight Zone of sports video games. We try to break video games and et cetera. I also have a personal uh, Twitch stream um, at Kofi Y, and then I do a bunch of uh, short form TikToks uh, now also. Yeah, I, I love that you brought that up. So I love your series where you go through classic video games and do like deep dives. Like I especially love it because I grew up with all those games and your level to attention to detail is just like unrivaled. It's amazing. Uh, I appreciate so, it. Yeah, it's it's something that like it should make I have like a shed tear moment every single time I go through that. Stuff. <laughs> watching all those like old live games and all those even like 2K ones, it, it's crazy. So I know that you are a fan of NBA video games. Can you just talk about your first introduction to them? And yeah, what was absolutely. your favorite growing up? Uh, so my first uh, introduction to video games was I got an original Xbox about 2004, Ooh. 2005. And my parents got me all of the used games that year. So it was NBA Live 05, uh, March Madness 2005. They gave me uh, NHL 2005 and MVP Baseball 2005. So they just got me all the EA titles straight across the board. And of course, NBA Live 2005 is known as the best NBA Live. So Ooh. starting off with the best is uh, a hell of a note to just like get in interested in sports video games as, as a whole, you know? So are you a Live or 2K person? Um, I'm a 2K person now, but I understand. I feel like the what happened to NBA Live should be studied uh, in, in colleges. <laughs> that NBA Elite was just the weirdest. I don't know what the like, experiment that they were trying to do there. It was wild. Yeah, it's just the fact that um, I don't know how many people are going to like. I feel like young people, younger people don't understand that when the Xbox 360 came out, um, the next gen sports games were worse than the current gen sports games. I feel like it's reversed now where it's like 2K23. The next gen is actually the better one where the uh, now um, current gen PS4 is it's the worst, but it was flipped. So when I feel like EA Sports and NBA uh, 2K, uh, EA Sports and NBA 2K, when they had to do their next gen, NBA 2K's transition was fine. Yeah. But then EA Sports started to make the worst basketball games I've ever seen in the series so i think it had to do with the just the jump to next gen and ea just like the either the engines weren't like compatible or it just wasn't really it wasn't really a graceful transition so it's 2k now by default because there yeah. isn't an nba uh game anymore but i mean nba live game anymore so yeah no i i miss though that nba live 2004 even 2003 when like jason kidd there was just something about the dribble moves the side to side and the layup packages that were just like I've never seen a game like this because I, I grew up like uh, I'm probably aging myself here. Uh, double dribble was the first basketball game Ooh. you could get, and then I got NBA Jam, and then mm. I got the original 2K. I remember when that came because that changed because I was using the old lives when like you could get Michael Jordan on the N64, and uh, when Iverson started coming out with those series, it was just like it was a heater series, and um, that live had that that that's, that stretch right there. And then I don't know, yeah, to your point, EA just kind of dropped the ball with that Madden series too as well because even ESPN. Uh, 2k5 was just like oof one of the the top football games yeah and even the thing about that is that even after uh madden had like the exclusive contract they were still good games up until mm -hmm. i would want to say like i must be generous and say 12 right they were they were still making good games but 2k had their number and they knew it yeah. Yeah. um especially because the game was about what 20 25 dollars something like that yeah. for a for like one of the most complete games i've ever seen and it's just wild to see how older games were made with so much love in them and there were so many features that came with it right um i remember in 2k5 you could play like against carmen electra's football team and whatnot <laughs> and it was just like i don't know why and you go back now and you're just like i don't know why this is a game and it's like you get you would get a call in the video game and i think it would be steve-o or something and you're just like this is this is nuts and you're just like it's just so many features and stuff it was yeah. now it's just um 
all these uh the story mode cutscenes and all the stuff you don't want you just want to play basketball but you have to oh do like God. side quests and all of that got so. tiktok dances before i can go into my first nba game i was just like this is this is wild i got work tomorrow man <laughs> 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 making TikTok videos in a video game. Don't remind right. me of my real life right now. Exactly. Um, <laughs> now, I know you okay. are a, you're a Pistons fan. Yes, uh, I am. And I'm a Raptor fan. And I feel like last season, there was a little bit of online beef between the Raptors and the Pistons based on the Rookie of the Year uh, race, also between the Cavs too as well. So tonight, I was hoping we could pull a Crips and Bloods unity meme moment. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll say something. I'll give one compliment to Cade, and you can give one compliment to Scotty Barnes. All right. Oh, am I starting? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I can go. I go first. I go first. I, I think Cade is a, a generational talent who has complete mastery of pick and roll, and he can give you points, rebounds, and assists, and you guys got a stud in a point guard who's hella tall. <laughs> I want to apologize to Masai when he <laughs> drafted. When I remember when Scotty Barnes got drafted for, and the immediate reaction was like, "Why the fuck are you not picking Jalen Suggs Yo, not or whatnot?" I was on there. I was on that level, man. I was. I apologize <laughs> wholeheartedly. I was. I said that last season too, where it was just like, "Look, Scotty." The fact, the thing is, the funny thing about this is that Scotty and uh, Cade played together in high school. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So it was funny. It's just cool to see them both like shining and all that. And Scotty generate like he's going to be like a great defender. And the thing is, is that he's improving in, in like every level mm -hmm. where you saw I, we saw him put in the work defensively, like when on, on the summer videos and all of that. And then like just making more strides as like an offensive playmaker as well. Like the sky is the limit for him. Like the, the, the thing about the rookie of the year thing, it was that we the Pist Pistons haven't had anything to celebrate in like since the Obama era or whatever. Like it's been, it's been years, man. So we were like, let us have this. Uh, but now, but, and I don't think, I don't think we're going to get, um, we can't even, I don't even think we're going to get Jade and Ivy as rookie of the year. I think Paolo is going to just run yeah, away with that. Oof, so he is hungry. He hungry. So, like, <laughs> so it's one of those things. So, yeah, but I'm glad that the, the Pistons have, they have gone away from like because they had they had a stretch where they just like refused to tank like full heartedly <laughs> they refused to trust the process and they were just getting like 11 and 12 picks yeah. and it was good to see like an actual number like high picks in the draft finally it's been a while yeah i think yeah that, that's the worst position you could be as an nba franchise just like not bad not good like that middle area where you're not getting anything returns at the end of the year and you're not you know getting any playoff kind of stuff it's that weird limbo area and uh, right. as a raptor fan i've been there i have been there <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it paid it paid off right paid uh, off. now now 25 years with this team there have been some real high highs and some low lows and uh I never thought we'd win a championship in my lifetime. Right. I, I thought maybe like it's gonna be like my kids. I'll like I'll show you. Like I'll <laughs> experience this with you. And then 2019 happened. I was like, yo, anything is possible, man. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Let's 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 just go on a time machine. Right. It's June 26, 2003, with the second overall pick, the Detroit Pistons select Carmelo Anthony. So let's do a Marvel what if. How does selecting Carmelo at second change the franchise of the Pistons as well as the city of Detroit? I it's interesting where it, it's one of those like we picked Darko right and then won the championship I think the year after right mm -hmm. and Darko wasn't really that big of a help to that. I think the Pistons drafting Carmelo would have made an easier transition away from the Big Four. I'm talking about. Uh, well, sorry, big five, if you really, if we include <laughs> Tayshawn, um, where it was like Chauncey, Rip, Sheed, Wallace. I think that the Pistons, that core, they hit their, they hit their timeline and Melo didn't really agree with their timeline, but he did, he would have definitely helped mm -hmm. like the transition from, Hey, we have Billups and Oh, what are we doing? We're trading for Allen Iverson. <laughs> oh, this is what, what's going on. It's like, yeah. we, it just went off the rails. As soon as, as soon as LeBron, as soon as that, whenever we, people show the LeBron going off for like 25 straight points yeah. in that <laughs> series, every time I see that, 
I I see more like I'm just like oh come on because that was like the beginning of like the like more of a decline I I think you know yeah um losing to the Spurs also like the Robert Ory shot like but the Spurs were that's a generational team can't even hate on that mm-hmm. but I think that the Pistons for the window that they had and for the age of that core Melo didn't really like he wasn't really like near it but like he was close to where he could have definitely helped uh prolong that uh core for at least two or three years um and but i don't know i feel like the pistons still end up not like it's not it's hard to say because it's like Melo was able to get his reps get his shots up with like the nuggets and get rookie of the year where it's like do we know if Mello, um, how would Mello have fit with a Pistons core that was already like set in stone? Yeah. You know, would there have been tension there? Would have been, I would have loved to see it. I, I, but I can't, I'm not going to be able to like fully be like, I guarantee that the Pistons <laughs> would have won. They would have beat the, what, what, who won, who won it? Um, they would have beat the Spurs. Yeah. They would have beat the Heat. Like they would have beat the Heat in advance and beat the Met. Like I can't say all that. Yeah. But I do know that. Um, anything was, I feel bad for Darko actually. Yeah. I feel bad for, I feel bad for a lot of NBA draft busts when it doesn't work out. Yeah. And then everybody around them was good. Like <laughs> that was, that's probably, I think for a draft bus, I think it's not, it's not how you did. I think it's how the people around you. Yeah. Um, I think it's a testament. Comparison. Yeah. It's, it's that it's also a testament to how like a franchise kind of uh, brings you in and your opportunities and your touches and how you embrace the city and the city embraces you. There's a lot of different factors and just kind of flat out saying this person who was the best person their entire life on every single team, including college and overseas is, is bad at basketball. It's such a weird, um, I don't know, way to kind of phrase their career when it's like, no, they've just been excellent their whole time. This, maybe this might not be the opportunity, you know? Right. Exactly. Uh, Shout out to Anthony Bennett. I feel sorry for you, bro. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's interesting that you have this kind of like Zen, like looking at, you know, like, you know, not the what if, because I feel like as Raptor fans, we have so much what if with Kawhi stayed or if Alonzo Mourning actually got on a plane and flew himself to Canada. So I, I, <laughs> I, I appreciate that kind of like, you know what? Whatever will be, will be kind of thing. So that was nice. I, I think that was okay. It was that was. <laughs> what 19 years ago i have to let it go by then like yeah. we like i think yeah it's with um especially with darko it was just like you know you take a you take risks in the draft and you it, it is what it is i'm not a scout i would never want to be an <laughs> nba draft scout that sounds that sounds terrifying to be an nba draft scout and have like the sixth pick where mm. it's like now it's like the media can't help you and be like, oh, this guy is a just shoe fire, like number one. Now you're just like on your own, really, yeah. where it's like, okay, well, all the all the like all the locks are locked, but now it's, it's up to you now. Um, yeah. that sounds absolutely terrifying. <laughs> That'd be crazy if you're just like in the arena and that person you pick is just clanking off the backboard, everyone's just shooting you looks, just like this was your idea, man. <laughs> Right. It's like it's like that. Um, It's like that Sandler movie. Um, I forget what the name is. It's like with Bo Cruz. Um, what, oh, have you seen that? What's it called? Um, oh, Hustle. Hustle. OK. Yeah. yeah. It's like that where he's like, dude, hey, bro, this is my last shot at. Uh, I'm like, what? <laughs> That's that sounds incredibly stressful. <laughs> you got to go all around the world and like look for a player and then be like, that is such i think it's a good i think it's a good movie yeah. but it was just like how much yeah, bad was, basketball do you have to watch as a scout too just to find those kind of diamonds in the rough too oof i i watch the pistons so it can't be much more <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's it's funny you know, i have a cousin out in detroit and he used to call me during that whole series like when the pistons were like back again and he would just answer the phone with a detroit basketball because <laughs> i was like a lebron fan and a raptor fan so he was just like yeah. he always used to neck me on that and i'm like yo I, I had to follow lebron wherever he went and it was always a, a tumultuous time but always fun <laughs> um <laughs> okay so next question who do you think in your opinion won the draft between the atlanta hawks and the dallas mavericks now personally i believe that both teams won and the Sacramento Kings are actually the ones that lost. But I'd love to hear your opinions as a Trey Young fan. 
Oh, I I always think that um the like I always think that the Kings lost and they get away they get away with this like the Kings get away with this argument because of like the Luca Trey thing. But the thing is, is with that tra- I was holding on to the fact that um I think the tenth pick was also involved in that and like Cam Reddish was involved in that I think the Luca Trey deal if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was always like. All right, let's chill out. We know Luke is generational and Trey's really good, but let's see how that 10th pick goes or that other pick. And then the Hawks just like ship Cam Reddish out of there or whatever. Yeah. Or I I forget which pick it actually is, but like whoever it was, I was just like, all right, let's. Uh, they were like, okay, well, Cam's not here anymore. So I guess this. But the thing is, is that I always think that, hey, did you, did you really want. You can't even. I can't even envision Luca in a Hawks uniform, right? That would be yo. Atlanta would go crazy, man. That would I, be so. <laughs> you can Photoshop it. You can Photoshop it all you want. I'm like, this is. Not, I'm like, I, I could never have seen that in real. Same with Trey and Dallas. I think that yeah. the cool thing is that they both, they both are embracing their cities, and they have mm-hmm. both done just immaculate things already in their career. Like both of them have made the Eastern Western Conference Finals. Um, you know, Luca and Trey. Luca's just a generational, like, just heliocentric star. Mm-hmm. And Trey is one of the best, like, offensive catalysts we've seen, where it's like 30 and 10, just like yeah. every, every game. Such a good passer. I feel like that's something that people don't. Yes. Uh, give him compliments for enough like his court vision since since uh, university college days he was he had great court vision especially going downhill he's like terrified i just saw him actually last night uh they played the rappers and him going downhill he 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 pushes that pace and he makes intentions with all his passes and where he looks and you have to like be up on him so you're giving away all these different leakers so he's yeah he's a dangerous dude he's terrifying and you know the thing about um you trade defensively is that you're like okay but we all know this and i'm glad that the hawks got Dejounte murray to kind of like cancel yeah. that out and be like look we understand that trey is never gonna really be a plus defender so we should just <coughs> probably get some defenders <laughs> yeah you know it's uh, like it's like that kind of that, that kind that, of thing that leads into my next question actually can you pick one player in the nba that, that you think would complement trey young's game the most now you can go uh, fantasy and be like Steph Curry if you want, or you can go something like specific that would just like something that he would just work so well with. I want Dejounte Murray to work, um, but you know we can't. We can go with the obvious where it's like Embiid, Giannis, all of that. Space the floor, nice pick and roll players. Um, I feel like backcourt duo, dude. Backcourt duo, probably no. Actually, give me Trey and Jimmy Butler. I actually, like oh, I I would like I, that. I really like that actually. I saw. I had to watch. I had to watch the Miami Heat put Trey and Alcatraz for five games. <laughs> they iced it was out. just. It was just. But people were like shitting on Trey for that, and I'm like, no. The the Miami Heat just have like eight perimeter defense. Like Eric Spolster <laughs> was 3D printing like <laughs> these six seven to six nine quick defending guards. They just they just switched them all out, yeah. and then. And then it was like, does Trey have? Uh, is there a secondary, real secondary ball handler on the team? Yeah. Not, not really. Yeah. Um. So, but so it was just. It made me. I was just upset because after <laughs> the after the phenomenal series and the phenomenal getting the Western Conference, sorry, Eastern Conference Finals, and then just get out first round. Also, it was the number one seed, Miami Heat. So it's yeah. like, what what more can you do? But I was like, dang. I yeah, it, that. it was a tough one. Just like, oh, one pick, switch. Next pick, switch. It's like, oh, they just have everybody. They just have contingencies yeah. for the contingencies. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, last couple questions. Uh, so on the last episode, I sat down with uh, uh, somebody who runs a Raptors podcast uh, here in um, Toronto. And we had this, uh, you know, that joke online where it's like guys can just sit around all day and just name random NBA players. Right. Give me your most random Detroit Piston player, something that would just slide. People were like, "What's going on?" I, I, I never, I don't remember that. Henry Ellenson. <laughs> Henry Ellenson. That's like the big white guy, right? The tall guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I might, have, I might even botch that name. But, uh, yeah. There's no, there's no, there's, there's no way to fact check that. There's no way to fact check. Yeah, he doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> Henry Ellenson's up there. Yeah. Um, John Lohr. Ooh, yeah. Um, for, for specific Pistons. 
Corliss Williamson. Okay, yeah. He used to just be mean to people. I remember that, right? They can just like yeah. knock about. Jason, Jason Max Seal. Uh, <laughs> the shortest power forward in the world. <laughs> Is he short? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh Carlos Carlos Delfino, I think, was oh, pissing for a little bit. Yeah. He was um, fun. Yeah. It was of course uh Greg Monroe when Moose. I I always I always tell people I'm like, you haven't seen true NBA like suffering until you saw the Greg Monroe, Andre Drummond, Josh Smith lineups that we used to throw out there. It was I'm telling you, that was some of the worst basketball I've ever <laughs> seen in my. And the thing is, it's, it's not worse because they weren't bad talent wise. No, it was just that Josh Smith thought he was a three point shooter and wasn't. So now you just have basically you're playing three power forwards. Um, and it's not even like when the Cavs were playing like three bigs last year because no, they all like Lori could stretch the floor at least, and it was just like, okay, well. We are now playing 1970s basketball in like <laughs> the early, I forget what year it was, but yeah, that was just troublesome hoops, man. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Uh, I feel like Andre Drummond, Greg Monroe got like 20 rebounds each from just offensive misses from three point shots. So that yeah, was, uh, it that must have been hard. So hard to watch. All right. Uh, last two. Do you have any like toxic fan things or quirks that you do that makes no sense from the outside looking in when you watch a game? Like, is there when anything? I watch? Um, well, I want I, well, when I was in New York, what I do is I would bet on the other team to win. <laughs> I do that a lot. That's pretty good. So no matter what you're coming out winning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, uh, yeah, I do that all the time. Um, where it was just like, Hey, this team is bad. Can I at least cash in some money off of it or whatever. If the lines are good, if the spread is good, the Pistons are at, I think there was a stat last year where the Pistons were like really good against the spread or something. And I was like, all right, well, so that's a toxic uh thing um what else do we i defend cade i'm not i'm not as toxic on twitter as i used to be it was like it's not like a it's like a twitter's a time sink now mm. um but it was always this thing where it was just like yeah people i i hate when people are like your team is bad too and i'm like yes <laughs> That's not gonna stop me. That's <laughs> never gonna stop me from like making like, jokes about your team or whatever. Yeah. I've never it's like, so and yeah, what? It's like, <laughs> it's, it's like you want to fire me? I I just like you can't fire me. I'm the manager. Like it's yeah. one of those things. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I'll sink the ship I'm on just to kill the captain. Like I don't care. Like right, I have nothing exactly. to lose. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and last question: Enemy of the state in Piston Land. Who is that? Enemy of the state. Yeah, who did like every piston fan can get on and be like, no, nah, they're not welcome here. We don't like them. I can't. I can't speak for that. I think yeah. I. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I actually really don't know. Um, <laughs> I remember when I was rooting. I used to. I used to just like root against LeBron so much, <laughs> so badly, and that's why the the twenty five the twenty five point thing just hurt. But then. When the Pistons became like just absolutely irrelevant, I was like, okay, I can appreciate basketball greatness now. Yeah. Um, didn't like Kelly Olynyk for a while, and then he started. Oh. Then he played for us for a yeah. little bit, and I was like, okay, well, there's not really a enemy of the state. It's not. It's not Joe Dumars, because um, <laughs> Joe Dumars is pissed, and he's still Pistons basketball royalty, even though he was a shit tier GM. <laughs> um. You know, it's it's stuff like that where it's like this, but uh, um, it's a lot of that. Um, it's not Darko because we've we've like that's that's I was just out of his control and whatever. <laughs> um, might be Josh Smith for me. I think it's Josh Smith for me, <laughs> man. I don't know. It was it was. Um, I remember we were so we were so excited to see like Pistons fan were so excited to see him leave because it was about time. Like he. Yeah. And then uh, there, so there's a meme, right? That I didn't make. Um, there's a meme of the Pistons like hanging up a championship banner, but the banner says we got rid of Josh Smith. <laughs> and then after that, we had to pay him like we had to pay him um, like five mil a year for like Ooh. four or five more. Years. Yeah, he was like, yeah, thought, it was uh, it was uh, bad. It's like we still owe Josh Smith money. And That's the alimony and then, checks. <laughs> and then turn it. Do we turn it around? Josh Smith is playing for. Um, what the Rockets the, are? The, the Rockets Hawks are or Clippers. Oh. No, 
No, nah, this is after. Like, he goes to the Rockets or Clippers and starts, like, playing well in playoff games. And we're like, <laughs> man, if only. <laughs> but, yeah, it was – yeah, the the <laughs> Greg Monroe, Andre Drummond, Josh Smith Pistons. They're, they're they're always welcome, but I don't. I was just like, that's probably like the my least favorite. That was probably my least favorite basketball team to watch. So right. yeah, <laughs> I feel like the Raptors equivalent to that is Andrea Bargnani. And then when we kind of uh, shipped him off to, uh, I think it was the the Knicks first. It was yeah. just like, whoa. And I feel sorry for him because if he was around right now, this is the perfect NBA for this guy. Just stretch could- threes, no rebounds, no like. Uh, duty to be in the key at all, buddy. He would have been primo past and living it up out there, man. Dang. It's it's sad to see like certain basketball players be ahead of their time, yeah. and like their careers didn't flourish because of it. You know, <laughs> yeah. I always talk about how I always talk about how if Kevin Garnett just took one step backwards because he took some of the longest long twos of all time, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like Kevin Garnett. If he like took a step back and like started becoming like one of the first like behind the arc bigs, because I know he had the range for it. I feel like yeah. someone. I feel like like I feel like, but that time it was just like not. Like, don't like, do it. Yeah. Like yeah, it's one of those things. So Kevin Garnett's already an all time great, but you always like wonder like what if like sometimes he like stepped back behind the line and shot a little bit more more threes. I feel like. I was, that's always what I think about. Yeah. In NBA 2K7, he's like a 72 three point yeah. rating. And I'm like, if in the 72 point overall rating, if you play a couple of seasons and then on the offseason work on your threes, Kevin Garnett yeah, becomes, a, becomes, yeah. becomes a 99 overall with, <laughs> he's already 99 overall, becomes 99 overall with a three point rating of like 80 or something. It's just nuts. Yeah. So that's, oh, that's what I always think. You know, straight up ahead of his time. Guy can guard one to five. And I think he was on an episode of the Jamie Foxx show. So (laughs) (laughs) a true visionary. But uh, thank you so much, Kofi, for sitting down with me. Where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter, uh, K-O-F-I-E. You can find me on TikTok at K-O-F-I-E-W-H-Y. You can find me on YouTube at Kofi. Find me on Twitch, K-O-F-I-E-W-H-Y. And you can find um, some of my videos on YouTube, Secret Base. It's called Fumble Dimension. We've been doing that show for three years now. So, yeah, that's where you guys can find me. All right. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me and Chad. Of course. No problem. Anytime. All right. Yeah, man. And that was the interview with Kofi. Uh, just want to shout out RD40. Uh, some really good comments here. Uh, the tall blanket mother of Miami. Truly. Uh, next one here is the is there a new NBA based fumble dimension concept that Kofi hasn't tried that he'd like to? I'll ask him because that was a video, so he couldn't respond to that. And lastly, he said, uh, "Is it still Jordan for uh, for the whole keeping Thomas off the dream team? It seems like Detroit will never move past that. Probably not. They probably won't get past that." And uh, shout out to Blasted J. As an Italian, I can say with confidence, nobody should feel bad for Bargnani. Really? Come on, man. He tried. He's a DJ now, so good for him. Uh, the last part of that uh, interview I had with Kofi, um, it made me think. It made me think. It made me think about apologies that I wanted to do and some things that I felt sorry for. So you know what? Apology tour. We're going to talk about it. I want to apologize to Donovan Mitchell. All right? I'm a, you know, Shaquille O'Neal. I'm sorry to that man. I didn't know about his game. I I did. I, I used to always compare you to Devin Booker and say Devin Booker was way better. But right now, this season, you are balling, my dude. You were about, I didn't like he went all the way to Ohio to get his groove back. I didn't know you could do that. Usually that's reserved for tropical climates. All right. I didn't know Cleveland had groove markets. I was unaware. I thought they only sold Drew Carey bobbleheads or whatever. But Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers look good. I'm talking Rihanna, insert any place in time, good. All right. The pairing of Levert and Spide in the backcourt is great. And they're doing this all without Garland, who's silent with an injury, who's coming back right now. So I got to say sorry. All right. Now, with that apology, I'd like to play this video. What's going on Instagram? It's your boy Alan Shane Lewis from the Extremely Mid Range Show. We're in the legendary Jurassic Park. The rappers brought us together, but you know what really binds people? Hate. So we're asking everyone, who do they hate in the NBA? Okay, we're asking Raptors fans who they hate. John Moran. He's a bit arrogant. He's a little arrogant? A little bit. You don't like the gritty? I like it, but, you know, he's a bit arrogant. That's oh, all. Okay. 
Trey Young. Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid's a crybaby. I agree with that. Oh, it's three to one. It's Van Vliet. Van Vliet. You hate Fred Van Vliet? Wait, wait, wait. What's, what, what hat is that? What hat is that? Give me that. Got to toss that. Um, I would think you guys would hate the Morris twins. I thought that'd be like a whole thing that you guys would have. Hey, twins? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Kevin Durant. LeBron James. LeBron, LeBron James? <laughs> Why? What did LeBron James do to you? Overrated. Fred Van Vliet's better. We all know that, baby. Oh, LeBron James as well. Oh, my God. LeBron James. Oh, my God. Three for three. I'll make it four for four. LeBron, too. Oh, my goodness. LeBron, too, does not like LeBron James. Cleveland, this is for you. Hey, 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 hey. James Harden. Why do you hate James Harden? Because he's a baby. Oh. Oh, LeBron too? No, he's I a love baby. LeBron. Oh, okay. He's a baby too. So hating on James. We don't like James here in this house. Oh, so sorry. Sometimes Russell Westbrook. Draymond Green. Patrick Beverly as well. What do you want to say to Draymond Green right now? You're a f asshole, bro. Woo! It's all sight. I hate Kevin Durant, man. I just don't like snakes, man. Oh, he said he don't like snakes out here. Do you guys have anyone you hate? No. Hate? Yeah. No. No? No. no. Oh, you just love the whole NBA. I love that. That's peaceful. Kumbaya. I appreciate that. LeBron. Yeah, he's LeBron. That's like the 10th LeBron today. Sir, I just have to say that's a magnificent coat. Yo, I don't know a thing about basketball. I'm going to keep it honest with you. <laughs> and that's why you're an Atlanta fan. Thank you. Okay, wait. What's the best McFlurry? McFlurry? Oreo. Okay, that's the correct answer. Hi, sir. We're just going around asking Raptors fans, who do they hate in the NBA? <laughs> Well, as a Raptors fan, I hate the Celtics. Damn right. <laughs> I hate Correct. Philly. Yes, keep it coming. <laughs> I like LeBron, but I still hate him for what he did to us during LeBron Woo! <laughs> And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Oh, one more. Gordon Dragic. Oh, you couldn't leave that one. I like that. I like that. Petty. Let the hate flow through you. Do they hate Kyrie Irving? Kyrie Irving. Why do you hate Kyrie Irving? Because he talks a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Who do you hate in the NBA? Cleveland. Cleveland? Just in general? I got a bunch of buddies that like him. Who do you guys hate in the NBA? Oh, yeah, you have an answer. Ben Simmons. Why did you like Ben Simmons? That goes without saying. Whew. You just like people who don't try. All the Knicks are pissed. Who do I hate? Yes. I know you got a list. Honestly, just because I'm a, I'm a Toronto boy, I have to say Joel Embiid. I'm on the Joel Embiid train. Joel Embiid, okay, that's good. Yeah. Joel Embiid. This last season with the with the airplay and after we did him in 2019, it's deep in the heart. It's deep in the heart. I, I feel that wound too. <laughs> Go Raps. Go Raps. Go Raps. Go Raps. Let's go. <laughs> yes. So uh, I recorded that uh, Monday night game against Atlanta. Beautiful game. Beautiful game. All right. Everyone was hitting threes. Yeah, uh, uh, Trey Young only had about, what was it? Trey Young had about uh, only 10 uh, turnovers. It was, it was really good. But that whole thing made me think about something because I, I sat lower bowl and I need to do a little rant. Okay. Now, I went to the game. I had a blast. You know, the energy in Scotiabank is dwindling all right about 96 percent of the fans uh in the lower bowl at that arena they suck all right they flat out suck whether it's uh not chanting defense or coming extremely late to games or they maybe they're too busy in the exclusive clubs that they have there at the arena it, it's it's terrible the vibes just kind of suck and who's to blame it's mls esports really for pricing out their fan base instead of raising ticket prices on season ticket holders they took it on the average raptor fan now I understand this is all good problems to have. These, you know, these things all come with success. After you win a championship, it becomes more of a uh, more popular, and that's fine. It's a big tent fandom, and I like accessibility. I'm all about that. But it feels so reminiscent of what happened to the Warriors, where they moved the team from Oakland to San Fran, and a bunch of tech bros filled out the arena, and none of the people from Oakland that supported the team for the years can't come to the games. All right, I don't even know what I'm saying with this rant. If there's a point to this story. I'm just saying it all sucks. All right. And another thing, I was sitting up close, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm chanting defense. I'm doing everything. I'm making sure the team can hear me. And people around me were staring at me like I'm the weird one. What? No, dog. You are the weird. You silently sitting there. You're the weird one. This is a basketball game, not the opera. All right. The team can feed off the electricity in the air. If you're loud enough yelling defense, the other team can have trouble hearing play calls. So make some goddamn noise. All right. Well, now that I've alienated people with that, uh, I got some 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 more heaters to give out. All right. So screw it. Let's just roast NBA players right now. Anthony Davis plays like he's made out of cardboard tubes taped together. I feel like even his teeth are soft. 
and whenever he eats uncooked broccoli, he has to take breaks to chew. Jimmy Butler is the answer to the question, what if a DMX song played basketball? Luka Doncic really looks like one of those 1980s villains from every 80s movie, you know? He's like, if I make this step back three, my dad's gonna close your community center. Joel Embiid looks like every character on The Wire just smushed together. I feel like if you ask Kyrie Irving to shoot the rock, he'd pull out a healing crystal out of his socks and just throw it at the rim. Kawhi Leonard laughs like he learned it from a book. If you Google image search Stockholm Syndrome, they're just a photo of Damian Lillard's Portland Trailblazers contract. Seth Curry looks like the love interest in every Hallmark Christmas movie. Now, I don't know how to explain this, but James Harden looks like the type of guy that only eats sandwiches unless the crusts are cut off. LeBron James feels like the type of guy that if you handed the ox cord, he would just unapologetically play his own music. Shaquille O'Neal always puts four fingers up when he talks about how many rings he has. Not for emphasis, just because he needs a visual aid to count. Ben Simmons is the type of dude to hold up a line at a swimming pool diving board because he's getting second thoughts up. Here. Oh, I didn't know the Babadook was in the NBA. And that was NBA roast jokes. If you like that, I might keep that going. That's always fun to do. I just want to shout out to some people in the chat right now making some noise. Uh, shout out to Artie 40. I mean, Kyrie, but largely for off court reasons, though on court, just never quite living up to what he thinks he is. It feels that way, right? Because he has the ability and skill of a Kobe Bryant, and we're not seeing the, the fruits of that labor. We saw it once in 2016, but since then, and before that, and as an Australian, I'm not allowed to hate Ben Simmons. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I will say this. There is a player from Australia that I do not like, uh, Aaron Baines. He came to the Raptors, and uh, it was a, it just wasn't the greatest. What else you say? Uh, is, this, is that Scotia Bank an issue? Is the same with the Raptors and Leafs? Yes. Uh, actually, I don't know. The Leafs, If I will say this. I went to my first Leafs games last year, and the arena was loud and packed, and they made noise. They sang a song every time the Leafs scored. It felt like a very good time. And I think the reason why is because they, the the Leafs fans are drunker. They are so much drunker than Raptors fans. They're like, yes, fucking go, bro. And it, it just, that spills out. And I'm like, I'm just high-fiving strangers. So I like that. And uh, Luca is a miscellaneous East German baddie in a Stallone movie in 1986. <laughs> I like the specificity, specificity, RD40. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, uh, we're just uh, wrapping up this show right now. Uh, we only have a couple more things, and we're, we're done here. Uh, next segment is called New Jersey. Who this? So we have some leaked jerseys right now going on. Uh, pretty okay. They're pretty okay. I like some of these. The Spurs one over here is looking kind of nice. Um, these Phoenix ones, that's, that's a really good color. The Raptors, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, Detroit's looking nice there. What else? We got the Miami looking the same. This one is very odd. Um, this uh, it, it almost reminds me of the Coors Light iced tea, if if you understand what I'm trying to say there. Um, very, yeah, very interesting way to kind of uh, put that in there. Detroit looks nice, too, as well. Now, I said I want to come back to the Raptors because look right here, the Toronto Raptors one, it looks it's, it's boring. Let's be honest. It looks very much like the Drake ones that we saw before. Not a lot of ingenuity coming on there, uh, but I did see something better. Now, I want to shout out to this person right here. Uh, this is uh, Bruno, Bruno L311002. Go follow him if you're on Twitter. Uh, he posted some really sick designs for the Raptors, and I really want to give him a shout out. So look at these. Look at these. We got the purple and white and red all together. That's what we want. That's what we want. Bring back those colors. We don't want to see Drake colors over and over and over and over again. Just 15 iterations of the, the Drake colors. Give us this one. And especially this one with the purple. Ooh, and the little. Oh. So shout out to Bruno, man. Bruno, Leo, Harara. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for making these and sending these off. Uh, shout out to you. I guess that's part of the shout out segment there. And uh, I just want to double check. Going to go through my notes. Is this the end of the show? This feels like the end of the show. Uh, thank you guys so much for rocking with me and uh, watching this one. We'll be back every two weeks. Same place, same bat channel. Um, if you want to watch it on Twitter, the ha the handle's there, the Alan Shane. If you want to watch, or that's my Instagram, Alan Shane. If you want to watch it on uh, on Twitch, Shoeless Lewis, and YouTube, it's just Alan Shane Lewis. So follow up, message. Thank you guys so much for uh, coming out here. Oh, we got more messages. How much? Uh, what do you say? Very white people are just more fun. Okay, thank you, Justin. Very much, yes. CLT, <laughs> awkward. And uh, that third, yeah, it is fire, right? That's a fire one. 
But uh, that is the end of the show. Thank you so much. Uh, see you guys in the next two weeks. And uh, if you if you want to see the playback of all the, the videos, if you're listening to this on audio, make sure to go to YouTube uh, and my and also my Twitter. I will post the videos there of this whole thing so you get to see all the visuals that came with the show. But thank you so much. Have yourself a good night.